the opportunities available for them. Speak on that. Well, the whole scope of sports and everything has expanded so much on TV, radio, everything. And it just keeps expanding. I mean, I laughed when somebody, when I heard somebody many years ago going, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast. I go, what, what is that? A podcast? That's stupid. And you know, went on and on. And now there's, I can't even know, everybody has a podcast. And I run into people all the time that talk about how much they listen to them too. So, you know, just, it, it, there's many opportunities for ex-athletes. And I think um, once a lot of people are done like me, you, you want to talk about it. You want to stay involved. You want to study it. And, and, and hopefully you can give out information and knowledge to people that they don't know. Well, you know, it's, it's very, very um, peculiar that you say basically about how people can work outside of their careers after their careers is over. But speak of the educational aspect to the athletes of today, how the importance of you must have some type of scholastics in well, order to continue to survive sure. and strive. It's one thing to work in the business, but whatever, like football and sports that I'm doing or whatever, which are, like you said, a lot of people are doing. But it's like saying when you're growing up in high school and college, I'm going to be a pro football player. Well, okay, that's great. What are you going to do if it doesn't work? What if you do you don't get the opportunity? What you know all these things. So you always have something to fall back on. So, you know, I I say it all the time to young kids. You know, and a lot of quarter, mostly all quarterbacks. You know, man, got to get those grades. You know, you got. We got to have something there in case something. it doesn't work the way you want in life, which we know we always don't get what we want. <laughs> and it, it, it's really, um, just to go back into that, it, it's heartbreaking to watch, but this is part of life, to watch kids in young high school through college do everything they can do to be what they want to be. But it's just not going to happen. And I know it, it hurts them. It hurts your heart to dedicate yourself to want to play a professional sport or whatever. And when it doesn't work, it's it's tough. But you got to, man, you know, you there's always going to be a period where you're going to be, you know, gr not grieving, but, you know, down. But you got to have something there. That's why I say about that education that can give you another opportunity to enjoy something else that you, you want to do. Great, great point. And this would be football is a kid's game. Yeah. Can you explain to our audience the lessons of the importance of the lessons that you have learned and all of those that participated in it, regardless of what level? Right. The lessons that it give you when you get knocked down, you get up from the passing to the running to the blocking to the catching. Well, look, if you're going to play professional sports, you're going to fail a lot. Okay. I don't care who you are, you know, and yeah, there's exceptions, guys that win more than others. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, football to me is a great teaching uh, sport. And I, I'm, of course, probably jaded a little bit, but I think it's the best one out there because it's discipline, it's teamwork. You gotta have a bunch of people come together to make it work. And as Bill Parcells, he had a lot of great sayings, of course, over the years. He goes, you know why people love football? Because it's so hard. And you know what? I, I'm going to say that was the greatest thing I loved about it, how hard it was. Because when it's hard, you feel like, man, at least I have a chance to separate myself because I don't care about hard. I like that. Coach, we're going to stay here three hours? I don't care. You have to give up a certain amount of your individuality. Absolutely. As a team member. Yeah. And that's something that you spoke on very briefly. It's so true that you have to give up a certain percentage of yourself in order to fit in the cohesiveness of one objective, and that is to be victorious. Now, I'm going to ask you about a couple of guys. <laughs> Jim Burt. Jim Burt, I oh. Him. I love him. Well, Jim Burt would have been an unbelievable coach. One, he just has a personality, well, you know, very tough, and uh, great tactician, loved the game and everything else. But Jim, probably a lot like me, it'd be one thing coaching, but you know, after, 
after a month, he goes, well, hell, I got to be the head coach. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it's never, that's Jim. And uh, but wow, he was a tremendous player and he could stand in front of a truck and hold it up. I mean, that's what he was. Yes. He held people up. So Harry Carson and Gary Reasons, Lawrence Taylor, all them could run around as he's occupying two guys yes, or whatever. At one time. At one time, then you know. Mm -hmm. And if Jim Bird ever puts his hands on you, you're you in know trouble. They're on you. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> Leonard got Leonard Marshall. Leonard Marshall. Leonard Marshall should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if he'll ever get there. But why wow, was he good? But he, unfortunately, which happens to a lot of athletes in football, got overshadowed by Lawrence Taylor, and we just people didn't pay enough attention to him because it's like today's game. Well, what in, do in the trenches? That's what happens. Well, that, that and but it's like today, guys in the NFL get overshadowed all the time on TV because of what? Because everybody, not everybody, but it, it's just quarterback coach, quarterback coach, because those are the two we all know. Yes. They don't know the left tackle. They don't know the great defensive lineman sometimes. They might know him, but, you know, the public doesn't want to hear about all those people all the time. They want to hear about the guy in the stands when he scores the score. What's that? When he scores the score. Well, the touchdown, the receivers, the backs, and things of that nature. Yeah, it's it's, uh, but that's just the nature of uh, everything right now, you know, in, in in life, and especially in especially in football, it is unbelievable the focus that's now put on the quarterbacks, and the focus is on them. And I got to admit, more and more, not want to say pressure, but more and more is put on them, even by organizations that we need you to excel, uh, not all the time, but as at a high level, that's let's, for sure. Let's, let's switch the dynamics to the safety and the precautions, and not only that there, but how the North and South Jersey game exposes the players that it play, that it um, showcase. Right. Let's speak of that there, how important that game has been to the state of New Jersey. Well, it's been around a long time, and it's um, had a lot of great players go through it. But you know, to me, it's um, the game too. It's just a great experience to, you know, raise the level of the people you're playing with. So you're there with all the all stars, and it's it's something I think you look. I can remember the all star game I played in out of high school, <laughs> and I remember it like it was yesterday. And uh, so it's an experience that will I think is very valuable to them that they'll carry. There's nothing like um, what. It's, I don't know who said it. Maybe Beasley Reese. You remember him? Yes. Beasley Reese says, "Hey, we're out here trying to create memories, baby," and that and it's so true. And this experience of the North South All Star Game is an experience that really they will never forget the rest of their lives. Well, also, what Keene College must have must give great praise to Keene sure. College because they've opened their facility. Their candidates that play for them speak to the young lads that are in school and that are going to school that maybe never have been on a college campus at all. Right. So that experience alone is, is a beautiful thing, which it does. It gives them an all day, I think three days. Yeah. Three days, whereas they come and they sit and they talk to the individuals that are in school playing, and some that are not athletes, but they give them the um, tutelage of understanding that you're going from high school to college and you have to start all over again, yeah. making a reputation for yourself and getting uh, cohesively in with the student body of knowing what's going on in that institution because going from high school to college or going from grammar school to junior high, it's a new intangible each time no you question. start over. Mm -hmm. And this, these are the things that I, I want to commence all of the educators and all of the janitors and everyone else that see these young kids that have problems. Some of them have problems and that has nothing to do with ethnicity or religion it has to do with the fact that they're kids. Mm -hmm. And when you're when you're a kid, I have come to find that you're very, very impressionable, but when you have people around you that care for you right. and care about what you're doing because we're only doing what was done for us. Right. That's the difference. I see a lot of people doing it now, but I think the people that we had doing it for us were older. That's the difference. And the internet is a great tool if it's used the right way. Right. Speak on that. Wow, that's 
you know, the internet, I don't even know what to say about that. It, there's it's just, the internet. <laughs> yeah, there's so much to it. I mean, listen, we can... Like the you know, interstate. For, like what? the interstate. Yes. Just like the interstate highway goes in it, and comes out. It's it's really unbelievable. And uh, But, you know, first, just about the kids going to the game. It's their indoctrination, in my opinion, to college. It's like, oh, let's break the ice a little bit and just show you some of the things that are going to happen here real soon in their life. As they, in September, they'll all be going to colleges. Well, before that, because almost everyone's going to college to play football at some True. level. So, you know, that's one thing. And then I can be on a field with a bunch of kids now, and there's the quarterbacks, and we're talking to them. And I look out there, and there's a receiver, you know, the inside receiver. I go, what are you doing? And... Oh, I'm watching Julian Edelman run the route that you're teaching us. So, woman, I go, oh my, God. no, I actually like go, oh, that's pretty cool. But let's wait and do this when we're done. But they're watching stuff on the internet to teach themselves. So there's a lot of good to this, what's going on in the social media world that you can learn a lot of things that back when you and I were growing True. up, hell, we wouldn't learned it and we had to do learn it the hard way. Do what you're told and do what I say, whereas learning is not always in the architectural structure. Learning is visual, practicality, consistency, and sometimes you fall short of the goal that you're trying to achieve, Absolutely. but you get up. Yeah, That's the main thing that I want to press upon today, your importance of getting up. Listen, if you don't get up, that means you, I'm not gonna say that, says something about you. That means you didn't love what you were doing enough. Hmm. Can you explain that a little deeper? Well, yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know. I think that's that was part of my life, that I grew up in a big family. It was tough, all these other things. But in football, my gosh, failure is so overwhelming to the success. Here's failure, here's success. But that's why we do it, because when success comes, it's awesome. It's worth it. It's worth it, and especially in football, to me, because you share it. And you know how hard it is, but you share it with your teammates. And that, that is a great thing. But so I got hurt, of course, many times. And most of them are my fault because that's the way I was taught. Mm. I didn't know another way. Heavy. Stand in, come on, Take you know, whatever. It. But when I would get hurt, people go, well, what do you think? You, you think you might not play anymore? I go, what are you? Of course <laughs> I'm going to play. I mean, you know, it, that that never, as you know, you, come on, it, it just it never think, leaves you. Do you think that disposition is around now? Yes, okay. I think the ones. Yes, I still see a trim. Like I was talking you earlier, go back these, to the passion and that doing what you want to do. Man, I see it a lot, and I see it in young kids. But you know, I think to just not to get off track here, or other, but you know, can we raise our kids like we were raised? And the answer is no. We're not allowed to really. No, you're it. not. Because, oh, no, 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 yeah. And, I, you know, I, my dad was strict. But that doesn't mean we were, he was really strict. Well, the men of that time, I can say this because my father was older than yours by at least 50 years. Yeah, I know you do. And <laughs> they showed you they loved you, but they didn't tell you. Right. They were the beacon of light and the pillar of strength. But more than anything else, they were the provider, the mother or your grandmother. They were the nurturers. Right. And you learn from the practicality of that that is shown to you continuously. Um, That's a good one. Dad beat me up. You know, I'm not. I'm just saying. And mama softened And mama you softened up. it up. I mean, that, boy, never, that is my never, family. And never went against. Yes. Now, this is, we're going to laugh at this one. And, and you guys need to understand this. Your father would say, when he come in, how was school today? Oh, it was fine, blah, blah, blah. And your mother would say something out the kitchen. Oh, well, you know he had a note come home with him today. It's funny, all of us from that same school. Yeah. Now, once your father's voice changed, you knew. Oh, Now, yes. then your mother would come and say, after this, boy... You know how your father is. Now, we're saying, well, why'd you tell them? But they never went against each other no, you're in right. presence. You're right. Never. Yes. You didn't um, wash your dirty laundry in the street. Would it happen in the house? 